Hi, how you doing? Will Perry here. And uh, this is about all things narcissistic, uh, self-esteem. Uh, if you're attracting narcissists in your life, this will uh, explain it because this is the genesis where it comes from. Uh, the family, the environment that we grow up in, especially in the early years. So this is about the narcissistic parents and that can be uh, either the mother or the woman. In this case, I'm taking it uh, mother or the woman, the mother or the father. In this case, I'm taking it as the father. So the child how they will feel, how growing up in this environment will impact them. If they feel invisible, they'll feel unimportant, they'll feel worthless. Is this, is this you? Are you recognising this in yourself? Uh, they will blame themselves for whatever is going on in their family environment and they'll feel responsible for what their parents are having to deal with, the situation that they're all in as a family, that the parents are dealing with, maybe their parents are arguing or... Yeah, dealing with doesn't mean that it's always shouting or arguing. Uh, there could be a, a, a substance abuse. There be, could be, you know, addictions. There could be anything. Or it could be really normal, you know, what's low-key normal. But there could be tensions under the surface where you have to walk on or feel like you tread on eggshells. Classic, classic phrase for self-esteem. Um, you could feel, and that's because you, you feel these things because there's a lack of validation. There's a lack of validation for the child from the parents, particularly the one obviously that's narcissistic. The narcissistic one will focus on themselves more than the needs of the child, the growing, nurturing needs of the child. And they tend not to trust, the child tends to learn not to trust their own feelings because they get invalidated by the parent or they're just not validated so this can be and, and i've colored in the the narcissistic father in this case so this can lead to confusion for the child because there's inconsistent um messages coming from the the parent they can either change there's all sorts of different patterns they can change on a six months or have these big patterns that build up over like twice a year the big explosions eruptions you know but you can feel it building the tension yeah, everyone's different um but uh, the inconsistency from the parents can lead to a lot of confusion for the children because of course they're learning this as they go along um promises not being kept from the from the parent you know it's so exciting and then you, it's like when is it going to come when is it going to come and when you ask it's like don't be so inconsistent you're um, not inconsistent don't be so you know uh, you're so selfish you're so you know you can be reprimanded for them thinking about the, you know asking about the thing that they've prompt you know it can be really confusing it can lead to uns, uh, uncertainty and instability of a sense of a feeling of instability for the child uh, and maybe you can recognize that if you have low self-esteem and it becomes hard to trust others or to feel secure within yourself or with others or in your environment. So can you see how this stuff over time builds up that insecurity within you, within the child growing up with narcissistic parents? Also, um, guilt from being shamed. So the, the child can have guilt from being shamed by the parent, shamed in public, shamed uh, for asking questions for things that weren't promised, uh, you know, being manipulated, you know, you, you know, in all sorts of different horrible ways and, uh, and subtle ways that the child thinks is normal because it is normal um, and they get used to it. And, you know, they don't realise, of course, children don't realise that they're getting manipulated and they can doubt their own self-worth their own validity again comes down to validation and all these things that i'm talking about are learned responses from the environment that we grow up in you know that makes sense we're not we're born as a blank, blank canvas uh, and and these are all learned responses you know what we believe about ourselves what we think about ourselves what we believe we think the same things over time they become uh, hardwired in our brain that's a belief okay so these are learned responses which is interesting for when you want to change also, confusion for the child is compounded by the partner of the narcissist. So now I'm going to the mother who will classically have low self-esteem because narcissists don't want somebody uh, with a, the same level of, of narcissicity <laughs> um, of narcissism as them. They want somebody that's low on narcissism traits so they can manipulate them so they can get their own sense of self-worth from controlling them controlling others so that that partner will have the mother in this case have low self-esteem so again the child is learning from the mother but also from the father of course but from the mother and that's about low self-esteem and how we deal with this difficult person in our family um they can feel often you know look flustered or very much be down on themselves you know oh it's me it's not your father it's my fault i shouldn't have done that i should you know 
Does that ring true? Can you recognize this? You, they might be stressed or unhappy. Oh, no, it's nothing. It's me. It's me. It's me. But of course, they're going to blame themselves because they put their partner on a pedestal. Um, it's part of the pattern. This is why this stuff it becomes generational because it, 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 it's a learned response. You know, it's terrible stuff. So there's three outcomes for the child in this environment growing up with a narcissist. Number one is healthy self-worth, healthy self-esteem self-esteem but where is that going to come from because it's not going to come from this family unit but it can come from you know from teachers from wider family members it can come from people who kind of put out a, a, a overarching wing and, and look after and nurture somebody just enough to give them a healthy sense of self-esteem which is a lovely thing however in this environment on the on the surface of it it's, it's unlikely more likely is to have number two which is I've, uh, number one sorry i've put there number number two which in red i've put number one just to be clear is the mother's role low self-esteem low self-worth be down on yourself tread on eggshells be really sensitive empathetic to the needs of that person and when you need to duck down when you need to be quiet when you need to really butter them up and keep them happy and, and fulfill their needs over your own and number three or the third outcome of this being, being brought up in this environment is number three, which is being narcissistic. And I've put that for clarity. Number two, in this case, in this scenario, the father to become narcissistic. And that's when children start to gang up on the, the mother in this case, when then the children starts to emulate the narcissistic father and get pleasure. Oh, we're only having a joke. Oh, you're so sensitive. Oh, you're so, you know, all these comments are starting to be learned and there's benefits and there's reward and recognition and validation from the narcissist to the child. Can you see how that is so dangerous and likely to build the child into narcissism? The mother might protect the child as much as possible, but what they'll see and what they won't realise they're doing is teaching the children how to have low self-worth, which is a really sad thing, but it's better than being narcissistic, is it? Because they're going to attract a narcissist, you know? And I'm not giving a judgment on that. I'm just giving a, a different perspective on that, you know? To have a child with low self-worth, you know, they're going to attract the world of pain, world of pain, sorry, that you've had an experience yourself, which isn't a nice thing. So these three likely outcomes, if you've got children, you know, or if you're going to have children, which one are they going to have? You know, if they're going to have healthy self-worth, where is that going to come from? That has to come from you. It has to come from you. And if you think your partner is amazing, make sure you're not low on self-worth and just putting them on a pedestal because that's a really dangerous position to be in. Um, lest you become or enable them to become narcissists themselves, which, you know, I wouldn't want for any child. So um, seeing these patterns, having grown up, the child is you and you've now grown up in that. Seeing these patterns in your parents who, you know, uh, you, you love and don't question like that. Although in adulthood we do, we start to see our parents as people rather than, you know, these, these parents is a strange thing. When we grow up in those formative years up until five, seven you know, their their oh, surveys have been done, and, and and you know, it's such a powerful thing. You know, this is where beliefs, and we believe. You know, the, our parents are, are we put them on pedestals, of course. You know, uh, but as adults, we we question that, and we start to see the chinks in the armor. But seeing these patterns, if you've got narcissism in your family, is really hard. You know, it's a really really difficult thing. It's really confusing. And it's really important to know that it's not your fault. If you have low self-esteem, it's not your fault, or indeed if you're a narcissist, but um, it's unlikely for a narcissist to take responsibility, and they probably wouldn't be watching this video um, for themselves. Um, so uh, it's you know it's not you're not responsible for your parents' behaviours. That's really important to know. But then, what do you do with that? You know, if you're starting to realise that these patterns are in your childhood and perhaps your parents are still around and everything like that, then it's it's really difficult, or maybe you're younger, you know, and it's you're noticing these patterns, in which case I hope this video is useful for you. Um, this does not need to define who you are, or who you believe yourself to be. Because remember, going back to the three outcomes, you know, this, this stuff can have a massive impact on your life, a massive negative impact on your life. But you can change it. But you have to see it first. And seeing that stuff is really hard and really difficult. But it does not need to define who you are. But it will unless you become consciously aware of it and start tweaking it and changing it. Because they become hardwired in our brains. So 
my logical first step, the thing I offer is uh, for completely for free and completely confidential is a self-esteem test. I've got the link in the video, no, in the details of the video below. Um, and uh, I don't see the details. I don't ask you to put your details in. I, that comes from, um, might be interesting to you. Uh, I looked on the stats on my site and 70% of people would go to the page and not go any further because I asked you know, for emails and I, and I would follow that up with emails and, you know, I put you on my automatically put you on my um, subscription list. And, and it's like just 70% are blocking that and not going forward at that. So it's like, right, I'll take that out. I didn't realize, you know, so um, I've taken that out. I don't see it. I don't see your results. I don't get your email. I don't, you know, none of that. It's completely a page. It gives you a result, takes two minutes, 10 questions, and that's it. You know, there's no cookies on that or anything like that. Uh, or soft cookies is completely confidential to you. I can't follow it up in any way. Um, so you can discover whether this is for you, the, the self-esteem test. It's, it's really easy. Uh, and this is just giving a guide, a start for the conversation, really, the next step. If you score 18 or more, you probably don't need me. You probably don't need to follow this. You probably, if you're experiencing difficulties, it's probably um, just, you know, it's probably indicating that you have a healthy level of self-esteem. And you probably, if you're discover, if you're experiencing difficulties getting the words out now um then you just need to work on your confidence which is your ability to do something and that just takes practice if you've got between 15 and 18 that's probably indicating that you've got some of this and you've done a lot of work or maybe some work and then just a little bit of tweaking would help you get to a really healthy level where you can just push push through things like everybody else but if you have 15 or lower this is indicating that this is your situation and it would be really worth your while exploring this because you have low self-esteem. So, or very likely have low self-esteem. So what is that? The next step there to that is the, the, the first program I have. The step one is the 12 days to decide. And what that is, is a, an opportunity for really clearing the space and going, is this me? You know, do I, is, you know, is, is this me? Do I suffer from this? what do I need to do? What would it mean if I wanted to change it? What, you know, if I wanted to change this hardwired stuff in my brain, what would it entail? Um, it's 12 days to decide. It's really decide whether this is for you. Uh, 47 pounds is guaranteed. If you don't like it at the end of the 12 days, I'll give you money back. It's, it's easy for me because so many people are a bit like that, you know, 70% of people going away to, to take the test even it's like okay, well, I'll give you this uh, with a guarantee that if you don't like it at the end of the 12 days, please apply yourself. If I made it free, people don't, you know, the study's been shown that people don't take it seriously and don't, you know, oh, great, I'll do that sometime, put it, you know, so apply yourself. But if you don't like it, if you don't get the outcome that you want, or you're not happy with it, I'll give you your money back. That's that's fair enough, is it not? Um, so uh, within that 12 days, you actually get one-to-one um, -one time with me uh, to gain my experience and get real clarity on your situation for you whether this is for you, because this absolutely ruins your life if, or can ruin your life if you're not aware of it. So that's it. That's what I wanted to say. I hope that's interesting. There's tons of this because this is everything that I do. So compacting it down to 13 minutes is kind of difficult. But um, use this as a springboard to um, maybe take the next step, take the self-esteem test, maybe go, dive into the 12 days or, or you know, explore this on the internet. Uh, go, and, go on the internet, go and explore this, Google this um, and find out you know, what you need to find out to explore this subject for you because it's a big one and it held me back for years. All right, many thanks. I'm very passionate about it. I hope you can tell. Uh, awesome. Thank you very much for your time. I hope you've found this useful and I'm trying to press the button. There we go. Uh, speak to you soon. Many thanks. Bye-bye.